Everybody, thank you. Welcome from a snowy New York. I'm Jona Vera, co-founder of the Jewish Art Salon, and we're thrilled to invite you to today's event. Uh, many thanks in advance to the presenters and to the curators, Dorit Yordan Dotan, who's trying to connect with us from Haifa, and Judith Joseph in Chicago, and also thanks to the support team, Cheslin Amato in California, and Hannah Wiesenthal, alias in Florida. We also want to thank Canvas for their grant to support this program. And now I'm turning it over to Judith, who will introduce the presenters. I really hope that my, that my colleague and, and co-curator Dorit can rejoin us, but I'm going to read her parts in the meantime. I would like to um, introduce Rhonda Spinat, the artistic director of The Braid, this is a global nonprofit theater and arts company focused on sharing contemporary Jewish stories. And Lynn Himmelstein, founder and artistic director and chair of The Braid. They worked together for over 10 years, collecting the stories of women rabbis worldwide. Together, they created the Story Archive of Women Rabbis as a way to use the filmed stories for education, illumination, and historical preservation. Holy Sparks was a dream imagined years ago as a way to celebrate the stories of pioneering women rabbis as interpreted through the hearts and minds of Jewish female artists. And I'll turn it over to you, Rhonda. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Judith, for that beautiful introduction. Hi, everyone. I am Rhonda Spinak. I am the founder and artistic director of The Braid. And Lynn, do you want to say hello? Hi all, so it's an honor to be here with, with all of you and, and to see so many of the artists we've been working with over the last number of years. Thank you, thank you for including us. Yeah, I wanted to also thank you for inviting us this morning uh, to share with you just a little bit about how this project came to be. So uh, as you heard, the Braid is a nonprofit global theater company whose purpose is to tell stories of contemporary Jews and to preserve those stories. So in the early days, we asked the question, what Jewish women's stories have not been told on stage? And one of the answers was women rabbis. So we set about interviewing 18 Los Angeles women rabbis. And based on those extensive interviews and about a thousand pages of transcripts, we created the stage play Stories from the Fringe, Women Rabbis Revealed, and we debuted it in our season that year in May of 2010. So the response to the play was overwhelming. And what ensued was a 12 year journey, traveling the world, recording on film, inspiring and deeply personal stories of these spiritual leaders who were changing the face of Judaism. Now, along the way, the Braid opened its own performance and art space in Los Angeles, which connected the spoken word to the visual arts, exploring in both art forms such themes as temptation, courage, activism, mental illness. And all the while, as we continue to conduct more interviews, we continue to ask ourselves questions. So Jewish, isn't it? We asked, how do we make the lives and stories of these pioneering women rabbis more accessible? We then partnered with the Jewish Women's Archive, we're currently 75 of these interviews out of 185 now live. So this is where the story could have ended, but we always dreamed, how would an artist interpret through their medium these stories? Holy Sparks is the realization of that dream. We are so grateful to the Bernard Heller Museum for partnering and dreaming with us and to our thought partner, Jeannie Rosenstaff, for shepherding this project. And of course, to all of our artists, so many who are joining us this morning or this afternoon, if you're on the East Coast, whose works are truly divinely inspired. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, we continue to present uh, uh, Jane Bloch-Rosenstaff. 
She is a director at the Dr. Bernard Heller Museum and assistant vice president for communications, public affairs at the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. She curated the exhibitions Chagall and Bible and Justice in Jerusalem revisited the Eichmann Trail at the Jewish Museum in New York and her exhibition Rebirth After the Holocaust, the Bergen-Belsen Displaced Person Camp in 1945 to 1950 is permanently installed at the Bergen-Belsen Memorial Museum in Germany. Uh, I'm gonna show the screen. Thank you, Dorit, and good morning to everyone and a warm thank you to Yona, Dorit, J Judith, and the Jewish Art Salon for offering this virtual tour of the Holy Sparks exhibition today, and to my esteemed partners, Rhonda Spinak and Lynn Himmelstein of The Braid, without whom this exhibition would not have been possible. I'm delighted to share with you an overview of Holy Sparks, featuring the work of 24 leading contemporary Jewish women artists whose insights, empathy, and a broad array of aesthetic approaches have captured the essence of 24 trailblazing rabbis' identities and consecrated paths. Only a few of the artists and rabbis have had long personal friendships. Most only discovered each other through this project. The artists were given full freedom to create their work, and the only request was not to exceed the footprint of 24 inches by 32 inches to facilitate travel of the show. As you will see, the collaborative effort of women artists and women rabbis is a remarkable reflection of the vital and transformational role women are playing in Jewish life and culture today. Please note that I will show you all the works in the show um, and I will focus at the request of the Jewish Art Salon on their 11 members particularly, but I am so honored and pleased and delighted to welcome so many of the artists and rabbis who participated in this exhibition who are here with us today. And I hope that we will hear, have an opportunity to hear from them afterwards. We'll begin with Joan Roth, opening doors. The world moves forward every day because someone is willing to take the risk. As the first woman to be ordained a rabbi in North America in 1972, Rabbi Sally Prezand opened the door for generations across all denominations around the globe, setting in motion the first steps towards inclusion, diversity, equity, and empowerment of new cohorts of leaders for the Jewish people. Joan Roth photographs Rally, uh, Rabbi Prezand at her pulpit at Monmouth Reform Temple, illuminated by the radiance of rainbows, denoting God's presence that have accompanied her on her life's journey. They dematerialize the brick walls beside her, and the window on the left actually depicts Noah's Ark and the rainbow symbolizing God's covenant. Behind her are the Ark doors that she commissioned with the Hebrew letter Shin at the center, serving as a halo over her head, symbolizing both Shaddai, the masculine name of God, meaning Almighty, and Shechina, the feminine divine presence. The inscription, the world moves forward every day because someone is willing to take the risk is the mantra of Rabbi Prezan's life and career. The next slide. Um, the first woman ordained by the Reconstructionist Rabbinical College in 1974. On the left, we see Rabbi Sandy Eisenberg's Sasso's uh, life story um, and her revelation of the spiritual imagination as portrayed in Deborah Band's paper cut, depicting the Torah as a clay jar emitting jewels. And on the right, we see Rabbi Jackie Tabak, the Britain's first woman rabbi ordained by Le the Leo Bay College in 1975, whose par parable about inadvertent good deeds as the hands of God is evoked in Sandy Blyther's three-dimensional work. In the next slide, we encounter the work of Ruth Weisberg, and it's so nice to see you today, Ruth. Um, the friendship of this artist and rabbi date back to 1976, one year after Rabbi Geller's ordination at HUC, when she became director of the University of Southern California Hillel, and Ruth Weisberg was a very junior USC faculty member in fine arts. 
The small scale of this work chosen by Weisberg, it measures just a bit over 11 inches by 10 inches, enhances its emotional power. Geller's visage fills the full frame of the work, about to burst through its boundaries, reflecting the impact of this rabbi, the third woman to be ordained in the reform movement, and who was the first woman selected through a national search to lead a major metropolitan synagogue as senior rabbi of Temple Emmanuel of Beverly Hills. This representational portrait captures the distinctive warmth of Rabbi Geller's smile, and its diminutive scale pulls the viewer closer, creating an intimacy that expresses the rabbi's direct interpersonal connections through her spiritual and educational leadership and pastoral care. In the next slide, we see Hedy Abramowitz um, finding her home. Um, Hedy captures the essence of Rabbi Kinneret Shiryong's journey, making Aliyah to Israel in 1983, two years after being ordained at HUC and founding Kehilat Yotzma in Modi'in in 1997, the first non-Orthodox congregation to receive funding from the State of Israel after a decade-long Israeli Supreme Court case. Abramowitz, who calls herself a veteran Israeli by choice, understands the fault lines that Rabbi Shiryan has had to traverse as the first woman serving as a community rabbi in Israel. Literally taking on the people of the book, Abramowitz collages book parts into a conceptual portrait of Rabbi Shiryan finding her home. In this dissonant assemblage, Zionist works in Hebrew and English docile next to biblical texts, Israeli songs, and maps of Israel. Praising the rabbi's recollection of portraying Zeresh in the Purim spiel of her youth because, quote, she wanted to be different, Abramowitz includes the Purim story as an element. The restless, ill-fitting juxtaposition of elements reflects the tremendous challenges of fitting in while breaking out of conventional boundaries to transform Israeli society. We feel both the energy and the obstacles of her journey, not a smooth one as an outspoken advocate for reform Judaism in Israel. Next slide. Rabbi Amy Perlin facing overwhelming discrimination against hiring women as rabbis in congregations after her ordination in 1982 decided to found her own synagogue and was the first female rabbi to start a congregation, Temple B'nai Shalom in Fairfax Station, Virginia in 1986. Establishing a caring community guided by and living its Jewish values, her rabbinate has focused on teaching, counseling and innovative preaching and worship grounded in a deep commitment to the state of Israel. In this portrait, Deborah Ugaritz expresses Rabbi Amy Perlin's core values inscribed both in Hebrew and English. Open my heart to your Torah, love God, teach your children, and let my soul pursue your mitzvot. Rabbi Perlin is front and center, holding the Torah aloft in front of the distinctive silhouette of her synagogue's Torah ark, showing the power and strength of her convictions. The crimson palette appropriates one of the priestly colors of the Mishkan, God's tabernacle dwelling in the, desert, in the desert. While the lush plants growing from stalks to blossoming bright flowers that surround her symbolize the process of her building the synagogue from a seedling to a fully flourishing community over the course of 32 years. Their vitality also express Rabbi Perlin's special role nurturing the Jewish identity of young people in her community, nine of whom have followed in her footsteps to become rabbis. The work exudes warmth, welcome, the zest of life and joy, offering uplifting wisdom and inspiration for the viewer. The next slide is of a um, portrait of Rabbi Amy Eilberg, the first woman ordained as a conservative rabbi by JTS in 1985. And here we see her surrounded by images of her social justice and human rights work in this portrait by Pat Berger. And um, in the next image, 
we see Rabbi Julie Schwartz ordained in 1986 at HUC, whose role as the first woman rabbi to serve on active duty as a chaplain in the US military is captured by Emily Bowen Cohn in the comic strip style that draws upon, upon the artist's storytelling work as a Jewish Native American artist. And now we come to Dorit Jordan Dotan's Angel's Embrace. It portrays Rabbi Denise Egger, ordained by HUC in 1988, and the first gay person to have held the position of president of the Central Conference of American Rabbis, the largest organization of rabbis in the world, who is also the editor of Mishkan Ga'ava, where pride dwells, a celebration of LGBTQ Jewish life and ritual. Dorit was inspired by Rabbi Egger's recollections about her volunteer visits to Jewish HIV AIDS patients in the early 1980s, when patients were isolated and shunned and society condemned them in fear and ignorance and how Rabbi Egger trained members of Jewish burial groups so they could give the dead purity and a Jewish burial. Dorit writes that she imagined Rabbi Egger as an angel who came to comfort the afflicted and fill their loneliness. In this work, we see the attentive and concerned visage of Rabbi Egger enveloped in layers of wing-like brushwork, the successive layers of gossamer breaking through the darkness to bring light. The sense of approaching movement and illumination conveys the blessing of her presence to those in need of understanding, healing, and compassion. And now we come to Judy Sirota Rosenthal's DNA of a rabbi, um, a detail of a much larger work. It portrays Rabbi Naomi Levy, ordained in 1989 and the first member of the first class of women to attend JTS, who is the founder of Nashuva, a groundbreaking community in LA that has drawn thousands of unaffiliated Jews back to Judaism spirituality, and social justice. Judy Sirota Rosenthal conveys Rabbi Levy's DNA of a rabbi through a floating sweep of a talit that embraces and welcomes. It's inspired by her playing with her beloved father's talit as a child that led her to her calling to become a rabbi. Rabbi Levy's gathering and guiding of souls can be discerned in this detail of her work, while the musical component, a recording of Elohai Neshama, is sung by the rabbi, her congregants, and the Nashuva Band, a partnership between Nashuva and Westwood Hills Congregational Church. Rosenthal channels Rabbi Levy's inspirational writings of finding resilience in life's darkest moments into this expression of the uplifting desire for joy, spirituality, belonging, and relationship with God. And now we come to Tamar Herschel's diptych portrait of Rabbi Bibb. Ordained by the Leo Beck College in 1990, Rabbi Pauline Bibb is the first woman to serve as a rabbi in France and continental Europe since World War II as the rabbi of the community of liberal Judaism in Paris. In this work, Tamar Herschel captures the ideas behind Rabbi Bebb's congregation rather than her likeness, connecting French and Jewish identity. She, she pairs depictions of Parisian landmarks, the Carousel and Pyramid of the Louvre, with images of a Hanukkah menorah and women wearing tefillin each of which are contained in egg-like forms and are connected by outstretched hands that never quite touch, both suggesting the spark of creation and the access to culture and faith to all. Herschel injects the core French value of liberty by her <clears throat> symbolic use of the color blue, which in Judaism is a symbol for divinity. The intersection of French and Jewish elements invests this conceptual portrait with layers of meaning. And now we see Ellen Alt's 
Path Breaking and Bridge Building. This work by Ellen Alt is the expression of a friendship of over 40 years with Rabbi Nama Kelman, the first woman to be ordained a rabbi in the state of Israel in 1972, and a tireless advocate for religious pluralism, women's empowerment, and advancing tolerance education in Israel. Alt constructs her portrait with quotes from Rabbi Kelman's favorite female inspirations, Salofakad's Daughters, the songs of Naomi Shemer and Joni Mitchell, lyrics from The Sound of Music, and Judaic texts. Walt explains, quote, the calligraphy weaves and dances as any change requires a fresh approach. A talit soars through the air, the tzitzit lift up in hope. The inscribed lyrics and quotations shift in font, scale, color, boldness, and direction amid layers of arc forms, setting up a visual vibration that creates a sense of rhythm, movement, and joy. And now we see Debbie Teicholz Gedalia's work entitled Standing Firmly in Her Garden. Rabbi Andrea Weiss, ordained in 1993, is the first female provost of HUC. As the editor of the Torah, a woman's commentary, she has empowered women's voices to interpret biblical texts. And as creator of American Values Religious Voices, she has galvanized religious scholars across states to offer wisdom to US government leaders at the onset of the past two presidential administrations. Debbie Teicholz Gedalia offers this beautiful interpretation, and I quote, Rabbi Weiss's journey is an assemblage of metaphors that, like my photo collages, are layered with significance. In this portrait, she wears the talit that she wore for the first time on the first occasion when she ordained HUC's rabbinical and cantorial graduates in 2019. The talit is covered with appliqued photos of artifacts that connect her to HUC such as Yaakov Agam's Torah Ark from the Petri Synagogue and green flowers from Andrea's Russian stacking dolls, which to her represent her stages of personal growth. Superimposed is a text that is meaningful to her. May my teaching drip as the rain, my words flow as the dew from Deuteronomy 32, 2, 3. Dew dries to be invisible like God's omnipresence and synthesizes like the montage elements in this portrait. Rabbi Weiss stands center stage on her grass, covered by dew, surrounded by her flowers and her fig tree, which bears a plaque from Micah 4.4. They shall sit under their own fig tree and no one shall make them afraid. Rabbi Weiss's pose conveys her innate strength, assurance, and sincerity. And now we come to Siona Benjamin's Holy Flying Sparks. It portrays Rabbi Diane Kohler Essies, who was the first woman from the Syrian Jewish community to be ordained a rabbi by JTS in 1995. She currently serves the Romamu community and has taught the arts bait midrash with artist Toby Khan. As a member of the B'nai Israel Indian Jewish community, Siona Benjamin identifies with Rabbi Kohler Essie's non-Ashkenazi identity as a woman, a Jewish woman of color. This sense of otherness connects Siona deeply with Rabbi Kohler Essie's and her radical path. Siona depicts the rabbi wrapped in a sari that flows into her prayer shawl, breaking through the glass ceiling, flying over a geological topography, soaring between oceans and transcultural terrains, symbolizing her two identities, American and Syrian, as she reaches upward. Her blue skin reflects the sky and ocean, borderless and beyond boundaries. And now we come to um, depictions of Rabbi Noah Kushner, ordained in 1998 by HUC. 
uh, where her story of holding the names of those loved and lost in the San Francisco kitchen community she founded is expressed by Harriet Estelle Berman's Hanukkah menorah of recycled materials with a view over Kushner's city. And we see Rabbi Hara Person's journey ordained in 1998 by HUC, which was built on words as the publisher and first woman chief executive of the Central Conference of American Rabbis. Elizabeth Langer depicts her journey in her scripture laden patchwork collage entitled Devarim, which was inspired by Southern black women quilt makers works. Now we see Lori, Gross, Lori Gross's uh, portrait of um, Rabbi Angela Warnick Bookdahl, which she titles Shira Hadasha. And uh, what we see here is that um, it's a conceptual portrait that relates to uh, Rabbi Bookdahl's Korean and Jewish identity. Uh, Korean and Hebrew words are inscribed along the perimeter of the work and in the center, a succession of shins, ascending shins reflect um, Hebrew words that evoke the divine presence and simulate the kinds of chanting and the, the notion of the resonant um, sound of prayer. Um, and it's really beautiful work with, uh, you know, and the backdrop is uh, the Torah arc of, um, of Central Synagogue. And we can go on to the next one. And uh, Penny Wolin has done a, a serial portrait of Rabbi Sharon Browse, the founder of Ikar, um, showing her in a variety of poses, moods, activities, and ultimately concluding with her uplifted tossing of the orange, you know, symbol of all those who are different, who are maybe on the margins of Jewish life and who merit inclusion and welcome. Um, let's continue on. Marisa Tikal um, creates a psychic portrait, a mental landscape of Rabbi Claudia Kreiman, um, who suffered a tremendous loss of faith in humanity, but not in God, due to the tragic murder of her mother uh, during her childhood. Uh, by the bombing of the AMIA Jewish Community Center in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Next slide. And here we're thrilled to, to show you the work of Yona Verer. Um, here we see uh, Yona has chosen to depict the distinctive golden dome of the Neue Synagogue in Berlin. Um, a, a, a landmark on the Berlin um, cityscape and a remnant of a building of tremendous wonder and glory that represented the success story of German Jewry in the mid 19th century as a bastion of liberal Judaism in Germany. Um, destroyed during the war, the dome survives and has now been repurposed as a center for Jewish life in Berlin. And what Yona has done is she has morphed this Moorish synagogue um, walls that you see the stencil detail um, in the work uh, into a scroll um, and the incorporation of the, um, of the illumination that this, this scroll gives off uh, in which the letter Mem appears symbolic of Masorti or conservative Judaism, which is the movement that um, Rabbi Ederberg, uh, Rabbi Geza Ederberg um, leads um, in Germany today. And we're so thrilled. I saw uh, Rabbi Geza Ederberg on the screen and she could tell us so much about her journey and her story, but it is a, a, uh, an exquisite uh, conceptual portrait of a woman who is revitalizing Jewish life after the destruction of the Holocaust. And it not only reflects on what has been lost, but also on the promise of the future. 
and we move on. Here we see um, Rabbi Tanya Siegel, uh, who is the first woman uh, rabbi in Poland and the Czech Republic. And um, Linda Soberman has depicted her under a canopy of chairs bearing the likenesses of victims of the Holocaust. And so this portrait kind of projects not only Poland's tragic past, but also the capacity for Renaissance uh, personified by Rabbi Tanya Siegel in the foreground. Next. And Catherine J Jacoby has created this tribute to Rabbi, Rabbi Sarah Hurwitz, the first Orthodox woman Rabbi ordained by Rabbi Weiss um, in, I think I, I'm blanking on the, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, in any case, uh, and here she is, a, she is the president and founder of uh, Yeshiva Maharat, which is ordaining large numbers of women, Orthodox women, to be um, Orthodox women rabbis. And her persona is expressed by her embedding herself in front of the uh, Torah Ark at um, uh, Riverdale Hebrew Institute, um, where she serves, as well as embedding portraits of members of her family onto that tapestry. And in the foreground, we see um, her embracing her students, the women that she is ordaining and bringing into uh, leadership positions in the Orthodox Jewish community. And if we go to the next um, slide. And uh, Marilee Tolwin has created this portrait of Rabbi Rachel Adler, the leading founder of feminist, Jewish feminist theology in America, whose groundbreaking um, essay in 1971 was titled The Jew That Wasn't There and opened the door to the consideration of gender as a critically important issue in how Judaism is practiced and how Jewish leadership is experienced. And what Marilee Tolwin has done is she has inscribed the complete text of that essay onto her canvas, onto her uh, surface here, um, with the intention of creating uh, and simulating in the way that it is highlighted as if it were a page of Talmud. Her intention is to engage the viewer in actually studying this essay as if it were a contemporary page of Talmud that writes about the condition of women and the opportunities that women should be blessed to enjoy and are, are worthy of enjoying. Um, and having that be part of the study of, um, of our time. And uh, we conclude with uh, the next slide of um, Carol Hamoy's inheritance dedicated to the journey of Rabbi Tamara Cohen Eskenazi, um, who was the first woman to be hired as a faculty person on the rabbinical faculty of HUC um, and really was a pioneer in bringing women's studies and women's interpretation of the Bible to um, the academic and Jewish world. Um, she told the story in her interview for the braid um, of how her father during the, during the Holocaust lost faith in God and discarded his talus and tefillin, and his prayer book. And here, um, what uh, Carol Hamoy has done is she has brought the, um, the commandments of uh, commandments of putting on the tefillin as a sign of covenant with God um, and expressed it on these women, women's gloves that um, reach out to each other um, and, uh, and express 
um, you know, a, a faith and a continuity of faith uh, despite all. So um, this, is, this has just been a, a very brief introduction to the show. I would love to, to hand the floor over to the artists and rabbis who are with us to express their own feelings about the process of creating their works and of being the subjects of these works. Uh, but we at the Heller Museum at HUC in New York are um, incredibly proud to be offering this exhibition on this milestone historic occasion of the 50th anniversary of the ordination of Rabbi Sally Prezand. Um, and we hope that in doing so, and in traveling the show to the Skirwall Museum on our Cincinnati campus and to other venues around the country and potentially around the world, um, we hope to share this story to raise awareness of the transformational role of women rabbis um, who have absolutely redefined Jewish leadership in the past five decades and the extraordinary gifts of contemporary women artists who are contributing so much to the continuity of Jewish culture in our own time. And I just wanna conclude with um, a, a warm welcome to come and view the exhibition at the Heller Museum. It opens this Tuesday to the public. And we are also opening on February 15th, an exhibition entitled the Tanakh series selections by Joel Silverstein. And we hope you'll join us for the opening and artist talk on February 15th when Joel Silverstein will describe his, um, his work in accessing biblical narrative into a contemporary um, form of um, artistic creation. So um, thank it's you the very 17th, much. Jane. Thank so you. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? It's the 17th, yeah. not the 15th. Oh, the I'm so night. sorry. Yeah. Forgive me. It's, it's February okay. 17th. <laughs> Thursday night. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so now I turn this over to the rabbis and can and 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 artists Actually, who are on the screen. I'm, I'm going to moderate. They should, the they, should, they should all be acknowledged, really, each and every one of them, um, so that all of you can can take pride in who they are and, and what they've accomplished and what they are doing uh, for the Jewish people and the larger world. Jeannie, thank you so much for that superb uh, and kind of lightning speed journey through this extraordinary exhibition. You had a lot of material to cover and you did it with great insight. And um, I think it just leaves everybody wanting a taste for more. So lucky New Yorkers, uh, once you clear all the snow away, you can make your way to the uh, Dr. Bernard Heller Museum to see the exhibit. And for the rest of us, we'll just have to enjoy it uh, digitally. Um, but I really appreciate your, um, your insights. And I, I have a few prepared questions for some of the artists. So I'd like to kick off our, our discussion with that, and then we'll open it up to the group. So um, I would like to begin with a question for our director of the Jewish Art Salon, Yona Verver, and I'm going to uh, share my screen and pull up your image, Yona. Why do you think you, well, let me put it this way. Part of the curatorial process with this exhibit was not only choosing the artists, but pairing them with the rabbis. So my question for you, Yona, is why were you, why do you think you were paired with Rabbi Aderberg? Um, I have to guess. I don't actually even know who the pairing did, but um, Rabbi Aderberg and I are both from Northern Europe. She's from Germany. I'm from the Netherlands. We're both converts to Judaism. I don't know if people even knew that, but I'm just throwing it out there. And um, also we're both uh, community builders. She is you know, the leader of Mazorti Germany, the conservative movement in Germany. And also in her synagogue, she created a center for people who otherwise would not necessarily feel very connected to Judaism, but she has created that whole community, um, which I think is just fabulous. And um, my community building, of course, has been uh, the Jewish Art Salon, which I've done, you know, in conjunction with many other good people. Um, 
that's it basically. I, Rabbi Edelberg, if you're still here, could you please say a few words? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm here and absolutely delighted to be here and to see so many friends and so many new friends um, here. And Yona, I'm absolutely thrilled that you picked the Golden Dome because when I became the rabbi of that shul, you can see that dome from all over the city, right? And I was riding the subway and looking over there and it's like, wow, that's mine. It's shining over the city and we are back and building this community. So this is this was so, so wonderful for me. Um, it's, you know, following with the, with the artwork and the, and um, the exhibition for me, it's really like taking a breath in between all the COVID related stress we are all having and just looking beyond uh, and connecting with all of you um, over Zoom and, and, you know, looking forward to coming to New York one day, hopefully again, um, since I'm currently on the board of the Rabbinical Assembly, so, so the international connection is really vital. Um, seeing what American Jude Judaism has achieved uh, in the post-war period and trying to bring that also back to Germany and connecting it to our pre-war roots and, and so on. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you, Rabbi Aderberg. We're so thrilled to have you with us today. And thank you, Yona. We have so many artists to uh, visit with. So I'm going to kind of uh, quickly go to my next question, which is for Ruth Weisberg. And I'm going to um, just pull up her image. Ruth, um, so good to see you in Los Angeles uh, joining us today. Um, my question about your piece has to do with the format. You've known your close friend, Rabbi Laura Geller, since the 70s. Now, you are a figurative artist. You do a lot of works that are large and include the full figure. Tell us about your choice to focus the portrait on her face rather than pulling back and showing more of her environment. Oh, you're muted, Ruth. Just unmute, please. There you go. Okay. Um, well, actually, there are two reasons um, that I chose this format. One was that I perhaps mistakenly um, thought that everyone was doing this format. <laughs> I thought we were all working uh, relatively small and focused on uh, the rabbi that we had been assigned. So, but um, it is a format that I embraced. It's very intimate. It brings you close to the subject and also, you know, the face, um, I'm a figurative artist and the face is such a window to the soul. And I hope that I've um, expressed some of the complexity and sense of uh, joy and celebration that, uh, and, and thoughtfulness that are so much a part of um, Rabbi Geller's personality. Um, we met in the early 70s and she really was instrumental in my becoming a much more observant uh, Jew. Um, she was the, the, the head of the USC Hillel um, and uh, really changed my life. And well, it she, is a magnificent portrait and you really do uh, bring across her energy and her joy and her intelligence. It's spectacular. Thank you so, so much. Thank you very much for being here with us today. My, my great pleasure. And Siona Benjamin, I know, is here, and I am pulling up your piece. So Siona, you mentioned um, in your remarks that, or actually to me, that Rabbi Diane kohler Esses comes from a Syrian Jewish background and that she had to break through the glass ceiling in her community to become a rabbi. Your painting shows her soaring upward, flying over boundaries, flying free. As a fellow Jew of color from the B'nai Israel community of India, what is your feeling about where she will land as a rabbi from a minority uh, Jewish community? How's that looking? Thank you, Judith. I just wanted to say thanks to the curators first and uh, to HEC and to Jewish Art Salon and everyone who manages Jewish Art Salon so wonderfully and presents wonderful programs. Here, here. And thanks for inviting me. 
and to all the artists. Um, well, I think uh, meeting Rabbi Diane was, uh, whoever did the pairing did it really nicely because I think I got uh, a rabbi that I was very invested in and I felt really well matched, you can say, because we talked about, um, you know, how it was difficult for her to get ordained as a rabbi and how her Syrian Jewish community, um, you know, opposed women to becoming rabbis. And um, even though there was, I mean, I grew up in a very liberal Jewish India in the sense that, you know, my, fa my, my own family was very open and then they all immigrated to Israel. Um, you know, there was no bat mitzvah for girls and the, the bat mitzvah was, is an American phenomenon that happened much later. My daughter is bat mitzvah proudly, but you know, uh, there was no bat mitzvah at that time. So I understand where she came from. So, but later on in my life, I got very deeply invested in midrash and, uh, the, and I feel like that has really taken over my work. Where she's going to land, um, I think it is hopeful because I think, especially in Israel, my daughter is leaving for Israel um, next week uh, on a six-month Masa program, and I think um, there is a lot of recognition of Jewish people of color there. There is a lot of encouragement. Um, there is a great diverse, uh, awareness of diversity in our Jewish community uh, now more than ever. And uh, there is a lot of embracing. I am very thankful because I get a lot of recognition work and I'm grateful for that. So I think um, I, I'm, I'm always been proudly Jewish and I feel that, um, you know, it's great to see that diversity is being embraced, embraced and recognized more. Thank well, you. It's very encouraging to hear that from you, Siona, because I think I think you sound more optimistic than I've heard you sound in the past, and, and that's wonderful. So, um, and your piece really does reflect that. So thank you very much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us. Um, my next question is for uh, artist Joan Roth, and I'm gonna pull up your photo. In terms of the pairings, I just wanna make it clear um, that Rhonda and Lynn were very, very um, effective in pairing artists. We put together a list of artists with whom we have worked very closely over many years at the Heller Museum, uh, which they amplified with artists that they knew well from the West Coast. And um, in looking through the artist portfolios and the rabbi stories, uh, a variety of factors of commonalities, whether geography or um, it, you know ethnic identity or um, other other factors, um, were were in, at play in the pairing of the artists with um, the rabbis. And in some cases, I personally paired um, art, artists um, who were friends because I knew that that would yield, you know, a profoundly intimate understanding of, of the rabbi through the work. Well, you did a, a wonderful job and there's a, an incredible synergy in the, in the projects um, as we will see here as we consider John Roth's work. Joan Roth has been documenting the women's movement, feminist icons for years. Um, so Joan, I hope that you're here and still. I'm here, are. can you hear me? Yes. yes, I can, thank you. So you represent the, the groundbreaker, the trailblazer, Rabbi Sally Presand in a very colorful setting with reflections from stained glass windows around her at the pulpit in front of the large Torah, um, the ark, uh, doors that I just learned she designed. Why did you choose this setting and what did you hope to convey about Rabbi Presand? Well, that's, that's a very good, deep question. Um, and I, I know Rabbi Presand is here and I would love if she, if she could speak also um, because the first thing, uh, it was a great pairing as far as I'm concerned because um, she, you know the minute I met her, my heart was completely open to this wonderful person and we became partners because you can't do anything without Sally without being a partner. And um, a lot of it was her ideas as well. But the thing is the synagogue that she's created uh, is a jewel. It's, it's a jewel um, in, you know, and in an oasis in the middle of, the, of New Jersey. Um, it's so beautiful, it's so filled with art and it's so filled with her soul and everything that she wants to convey. So it was very difficult to look at this scenario and miss it. 
um, and also with Sally's guidance and her um, her being such a good sport of me running her around the synagogue, <laughs> looking around, see what picture we're really going to take. And so basically it was all her idea and it conveys so much about her, which, which um, Jeannie already talked about, but it has the stained glass windows, um, one of um, showing, show, bringing in this gorgeous light of the rainbow and the rainbow is everything to Sally. It's just something that accompanied her her whole life. Uh, it's, it's, this, it's, it's like a sign from God. It's her, her special, it's, the rainbow's a covenant for all of us, but it's also a covenant for Sally and God privately. And it's accompanied her with all that she's done. And when, even when she came to the synagogue for her interview, there was a, she looked out the window and there was a rainbow. And so the rainbow so much, you know, and the Lubavitch Rebbe says about the rainbow that when it, um, even in our darkest times, there, um, we, God gave us the blessing of the rainbow. So um, I would love for Sally to talk about it because I, it's hard to speak for her because she's so incredible. And um, she says it also well, but I just saw her and I wanted to convey, which to me is the greatness of Sally, which is um, she, she's such a humble person and yet she conveys all the spirituality and um, has broken all the glass ceilings and done everything for all of us but she does it with such love and joy and only wants to bring us to light to the world. Well, it's wonderful so in a sense the, the synagogue is a portrait of her too. It expresses Absolutely. her and, and you identify that in your work. Rabbi Presand, are you here with us? If so, um, we would be so honored and thrilled if you would unmute and uh, comment. I am here. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, uh, this has been a beautiful program, and um, and I offer my my thanks to not only the the Jewish Art Salon, but Rhonda and Lynn and Jeannie, all of whom have been my friends for a very very long time. Um, I love the title of the exhibit, Holy Sparks, because to me holiness is at the very center of uh, of Judaism. It's what we're all striving to be. And sparks, yes, all of these uh, artists have created sparks that represent uh, my colleagues. And I'm, I'm just so uh, incredibly impressed with all of this. I'm grateful that that Joan was paired with me because uh, we, uh, we actually met many years ago, but I'm grateful that we have been able to uh, reconnect and uh, establish just a really wonderful uh, friendship. And, um, and her work is incredible. And um, she was gracious enough to include me in the ideas. And um, I appreciated that and um, and rainbows, yes, are very important to me. So you see them represented in the bema of my synagogue as well. I did want to correct one thing. I did not design the ark. <laughs> uh, we commissioned an artist to do that, but the good thing about it was that the whole committee agreed. And, and you know how that is. I was a little bit afraid <laughs> that Maybe we weren't doing the right thing, but uh, Ephraim Weitzman is his name, and he did a great, uh, great job with that. And um, I'm, I'm going to tell you something else that um, that isn't really known, but can be known now, and that is that my portrait is going to hang in the National Portrait Gallery of the Smithsonian, and to me. That represents all of my female colleagues. I'm just there to represent all of us. And, um, and I chose Joan to take that photograph. So we are working on it now. And we're very excited about it. Wow. Well, thank you, nice I'm very excited. It's such an honor for me. All, everything is an honor. I want to thank all of you. And I, of course, I love, I adore Sally. You couldn't have done a better partnership in the whole world. <laughs> as far as I'm <laughs> both of you, and Rabbi Presand, we are just so thrilled <laughs> that you are with us today uh, because without you, none of this happens. So um, we really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, 
I would like to invite Dorit Jordan Dotan to say a few words about her piece. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, uh, Jenny and Lynn and Rhonda for this beautiful presentation and lovely exhibition. So at first I was uh, thinking about the, why did they pair me with an LGBT? Well, why? Okay, so obvious, right? So then I dived into the materials that I got, which was a lot of uh, interviews with uh, Rabbi uh, Eger. And, and then I saw that there is a lot of connection between us. She's so uh, revolutionary in everything she did for, for human, for the people, for the HIV patients at the time that nobody were just uh, looking at them. She was, uh, she prepared them for, for Tahara. She was uh, connecting with their families. Nobody could go in there to, to just be with them and support them mentally and, and also physically. And she, she was so brave in that. So I was really, really uh, admired her work. And I thought that this is what connected us, not being there from the LGBT community only, uh, which is great that she's a rabbi that is uh, from this uh, uh, community. So, but you wanted to ask me, Judith, I know you sent me the yes, question. Yes, I about have a, a specific question. Um, when you thought about the compassionate work that Rabbi Ager did with AIDS patients, you decided to create the face of an angel. Where, tell us about the face. Where did the face come from? Was it modeled on the rabbi or something else? So this is a very good question because this, this face is my great grandmother was born in Vienna and she was, uh, she's my angel. Actually, when I started to working on this piece, uh, the angel didn't have any wings. And while I was working on the face and I, I was imagining my great grandmother, why? Because she was a, I met her, of course, I was 16 when she passed away and I, I heard all her stories. And she was also talking about all the people she was passionate about in, in, in Shanghai where she was living for 11 years. Uh, and, and I was just seeing her face while thinking about Robbie Egger doing, doing good. I was seeing her face and I started, and what was interesting that the, the wings grow. First, it was just symbolic wings. I mean, it was very abstract, but then I, I was really, really working on the wings. It was so important for me that the wings will have this power they're breaking through. And so you don't even see the, the sign of the virus behind, like it's a ring of, of the, the image of the virus. But basically my great grandmother is her portrait uh, presenting Rabbi Eger. There's also a feeling of ocean waves. Um, you know, I, I sort of see the sea parting, you know, this miracle of this angel in the midst of the water. And, the, and to me, this looks like purification, the waves washing away the disease, the sorrow, the suffering, and this, this sort of very compassionate presence. And I, I didn't know that it was your great grandmother. That is, that's lovely. And I think we probably all have grandmas or great grandmas or mothers that we think about or mentors, many of whom are here, to be honest, um, who bring us a lot of hope, um, especially in today's world, which can be a little bit bleak. So that's a, that's thank a you, beautiful Judy. image. Just, I want to just say thank you for the Dr. Bernard Heller Museum uh, for putting this up, this exhibit, and I'm very honored to again exhibiting with you. Uh, so thank you. So at this point, let's, I'm just checking the time. Um, we are a little over, but I do wanna provide opportunities for people to ask questions. There was one uh, that's an easy question. Um, Shoshana Brumacher asked about, will there be a catalog? Well, I think the catalog is what I was showing work from. So Jeannie, um, will that catalog be available for sale? Yes, the catalog's available from the museum. It's also online digitally on our website and someone put the link on, on in the chat. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll be circulating it. It's, it's hot off the press. It arrived from the printer at the end of this past week and copies will be delivered to the artists and, and uh, to the rabbis imminently. Thank you. 
Um, now, I'm just looking at the um, screen of all the faces. And if anybody has a question, if they could uh, either use the raise hand function or just wave at me, um, if you have a question for one of the artists. Well, I know that Hanna Wiesenthal Elias had a question for Yona. So Hanna, why don't you go ahead and unmute and ask your question? Sure, so thank you so much. Uh, beautiful presentation today. Yona, I was particularly fascinated by your work. Um, and I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit about, uh, you know, what I saw for sure were multiple layers of meaning there. I know the history of that synagogue having toured it in 1993 during the restoration. Um, and I know that it is interestingly enough, one of the only synagogues in Berlin that was not uh, set afire on Kristallnacht. Um, it was initially set on fire, but then that fire was put out. And I see that, uh, you know, the, the letter that you chose, the mem, and know that the mem is very much connected to Mayim. And Mayim is of course water, but it's also uh, known as, as being related to Torah, Torah being the water that that feeds us all. So I'm, I'm very interested in that in relation to sort of this, what I see as a, um, a stacking, if you will, from the bottom of the image going up and this unfurling of the Torah scroll with the symbolism, uh, you know, that key scroll, which has, of course, the swastika in it. And so I'm wondering if you could talk about um, what you were thinking in terms of the imaging and the, um, the multiple layers of meaning there. It's a brilliant- oh, Anna, this, is, this is so interesting because uh, <laughs> first of all, it never even occurred to me um, that the, the mem also stood for Mayim. So I love that interpretation. Um, actually for me, first of all, it started as, you know, mem is for majority, the movement. And that's, you know, such, um, important thing for Rabbi Edelberg. She's really the leader in, uh, in Europe's majority movement. But also um, the word mem, M-E-M, in Northern Netherlands, where my mother's family is from, it's, they have a dialect and the word mem means mom or mother. So I think of Rabbi Edelberg a little bit as someone who really created this community for, I don't want to say outcast, but people who don't really fit in or, or maybe not feel necessarily comfortable in you know, regular cynical life. And so she really created this whole new community. So I think of her a little bit as a mother. So that's, that was the other motivation for the M. Um, also so interesting that you saw a swastika in there. I guess you mean the scrolls. Um, they are actually kind of um, Moorish uh, stencils that are used inspired by the synagogue. I've never visited the synagogue, but I've seen photos and uh, the walls are covered with Moorish stencil details. So I just took my own and put them in there. There is, however, um, something that in the painting that alludes to Nazi Germany, and that's the thing at the bottom. It's the, the gun. Um, originally, I started this painting like, you know, long before COVID when the the call first went out and it looked entirely different then. It was really a, more about, you know, the past. And then I realized, you know, that was really not what Rabbi Ederberg was about. It's about the present. So I took that out. I only left the gun in. Uh, it also relates to the current anti-Semitism in Germany. And I was still thinking, like, is that too negative? Should I take it out or not? But I, I left it in because it is a reality. And then the rest, the scroll really to me signifies like, okay, there was this glorious past, but there's also a very glorious present. And it's not about a gorgeous, you know, synagogue. It's really about the community and the texts and, and you know, the knowledge about Judaism that Rabbi Edelberg um, shares with her community. So that's how that came about. And Thank I think you, beyond, beyond the, the water symbolism, which is new, and the, the mem as mother, which I, Yona, I love it deeply, because I think it's, it's um, for all us female rabbis, switching from a fatherly picture of God and rabbi 
to including mother as an as another way of expression and i'm you know not talking about gender stereotypes here but just as an additional layer is really important and you might not be aware and that's another level i think which we of how shared this really is that the logo of the synagogue today combines exactly the dome and the torah scroll i had no idea oh wow <laughs> Uh, Ruth Weisberg, would you like to unmute if you have a question? Um, I would just like to speak um, on behalf of all of us on the West Coast that I really hope that this exhibition comes to Los Angeles and that uh, you can count on me to do everything in my power to help bring it. And um, I just think it's so important for it to have a really national um, exposure. Uh, I've been very impressed with uh, all of the work and um, what it means and the way it pays tribute to this wonderful generation of women rabbis. It just seems really important for it to have as national a presence as possible. You're here. It, it's, uh, it's phenomenal. There I, I just wanted to um, refer to what Yona was saying about her piece. And I think what it made me realize is you look at each of these works and there are each single one is so multi-layered and so complex, um, partly because of the thoughts of the artists, but also because of that interplay and that synergy with the rabbis that gives rise to added layers of meaning and it really becomes a chavruta experience where you have two people sharing ideas and about their life. And it, it really creates something that's larger than each of them individually. And I think that's a miraculous thing that uh, sure. we all appreciate. I, before we go on, I just wanna comment that uh, my, my curator buddy, my colleague, Dorit Jordan Dotan had prepared for you a flawless PowerPoint presentation, which due to technical problems in Haifa, go figure, right? The whole East Coast has got a- hey, hey, don't, 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 blame, don't blame my beloved Haifa, please. Okay, <laughs> well, but I'm sad that you put so much work into it and we weren't able to see it. And you had to put up with me showing the PDF of catalog, which worked out. But I just really wanna thank Dorit because Dorit, you are the person who really brought this particular program together and put so much into it. Um, Thank you so much. Judith, uh, Hedy, is, Hedy, Hedy would like to be asked a question, if, the, if you may. I'm sorry, who was it? Thank Hedy uh, Abramovich. Oh, Hedy. Hedy. I don't see you. Let's see, can you unmute Hedy? And ask yep, I'm one? right here. Okay, go ahead. Hi. Um, I, I really wanted to say thank you first, really, to uh, the people at HUC, to Jeannie, who really worked with me to get my piece to New York and uh, struggled with me through all those details. And they've been such great hosts for me over the years. And thank you, Bemet. It, I'm sorry that I'm slipping into Hebrew, but um, I really was impressed with the pairing also. Honored to be invited to participate this. And as a Jewish feminist, albeit Orthodox, it's a really exciting uh, thing to participate in. And I really hope lots and lots of people get to view it and see it and have a discussion. So thank you, thank you all. That was more, more a statement than a question. Thank you. And Dorit, I'm gonna throw it over to you to sort of um, you know, wrap up our conversation and also talk about our next program. Okay, so that was excellent, Judith. You really, really uh, do, did the right yourself. It was great. And thank you, uh, all the guests and hosts and Jewish Arts Salon, of course. And I also would like to uh, thank Canvas for uh, the generous uh, support for this uh, program. So thank you, Canvas. Uh, our next program is going to be on February 27. The Feminist Voice in Jewish Art. You should come and see that with Bila Zussman, Rachel Cantor, and curator Dvora Lees presenting the art of Helen Elon. So stay tuned, come February 27, mark your calendars. And thank you so much for being with us tonight.
I'm in today by you. Yeah, <laughs> for all our time zones. And thank you, of course, to the Dr. Bernard Heller Museum and uh, Jeannie and Lynn and uh, Rhonda for your awesome presentations. And all the artists and rabbis, call a kavod to all of you. Here, here. Thank you. Stay healthy, everyone. Be well. Take care. Be well. Wonderful to be with you today. <laughs>